Welcome to the City Current Show. I'm your host, Jeremy Park. Our mission at City Current is to power the good, and we do that through positive media, events, and philanthropy. This show features interviews with a mix of business and community leaders who discuss important efforts, trends, lessons learned, and ways to get involved so we can learn more about our community and work together to make a difference. Now, on to the show. We're always honored to bring you inspiring stories of individuals and organizations making a difference, powering the good. And we're gonna kick it off talking about musicians on call. We are joined by their president and CEO, Pete Griffin. How are you doing, Pete? I'm doing great, Jeremy. Thanks so much for having me on today. We love you all. You do so much good. And uh, technology is a big part of what we're gonna talk about in terms of using your musicians and gifts to be able to make a difference. But let's start with a little backstory. Give us some history for Musicians on Call. Yeah, you know, Musicians on Call is a national nonprofit. We started 21 years ago. And what we do is we bring live and recorded music to the bedsides of patients in healthcare facilities all across the country. Um, We play for everyone from children to adults to veterans and Pre-pandemic, we did that mostly by going room to room and having musicians perform at patients' bedsides. And that could have been anyone from local songwriters and professional musicians all the way up to, you know, Blake Shelton and Bruce Springsteen and Kelly Clarkson and a lot of these big names that you, you hear on the radio and see on TV. And you have a chance, you know, when you talk about the musicians that are on tour and these big names, the top sellers, the platinum artists, the platinum recording artists, in many cases, we see them on TV. But to your point, you get to see them actually humbly go in and serve, not seeking the limelight, but doing it for all the right reasons. Share a little of just kind of that behind the curtain side of these musicians and their heart for using their music and their gifts to be able to really make a difference. Yeah, you know, it it is interesting because when we work with all these artists, you really do get to see a very personal side of them because let me tell you, when you're in a hospital room, um, there's no cameras, there's no limelight, there's no press, um, there's no, there's no, you know, audience, you're literally just sitting there one on one with someone who's likely going through the worst day of their life quite literally. I mean, these are people that are battling cancer or maybe a significant injury and they're really scared and and in pain and worried and all those things. So when you get down to it, I mean, it's a very intimate moment. And what I've seen from some of these big artists is that it really brings them back to why they got into music and why and really who they are. Um, You know, I remember when we went around with Keith Urban not too long ago, um, he was saying, you know, he gets to play all these amazing stadiums and arena shows, but there's nothing better for him than to play one-on-one for a a patient to really get back to what it was all about. And, you know, the same thing with, with Kelly Clarkson. I was actually talking to her recently, and she usually does some stuff with us during the holidays. And she does it without any fanfare. I mean, she'll go to like Vanderbilt Children's Hospital with us and she'll literally perform a concert in a conference room for a bunch of the patients there. And then she'll go room to room to sit there and meet every single kid that she didn't talk to or wasn't able to come down to the concert in the lobby. And that's something you just don't hear about. It's not something they publicize, but they do it just because it's in their heart and um, they really believe in the healing power of music. Yeah, and I think that's just a really cool side of what you do is that intimacy that's created and that chance for you to get to know not only their heart and story, but how really much of an impact it can make for those that you're, you're able to bless in this way. Um, give me one, and you don't have to name names necessarily, but give me one thing that has, has kind of surprised you, obviously, in a good way in terms of something that you found out about one of the artists, and it could be someone that we know or not, but that as they're sharing with the patients something that you're like, wow, I had no idea. That's, that's really powerful. What, what's something that you've kind of seen unfold? Well, you know, like, like all of us, what you find out when you're in the hospital is that there's a lot of artists that we hear on the radio and see on TV that have either gone through themselves or have family members that have gone through similar situations to what they're seeing in the hospital. And I think that's one of the things that makes it so personal for everybody is that, you know, we can all, all of us can relate to having a loved one or someone we care about being sick or injured. And 
we also can all relate to the fact that music helps us through tough situations. It, it, we use music in times we want to celebrate and create good memories. And we also use music, you know, in the car when we're having a stressful day or as a way to kind of escape in our beds. And, you know, these musicians and the patients that we play for are no different. And so I think that they just really appreciate being able to help out in those moments because um, whether it's through their music or someone else's, they know that music can get us through some really tough times. And that's one of the reasons I think a lot of these musicians volunteer with us year after year is because they, they know how impactful it is and how important it is. And, and once you experience that, you just want to keep doing it. Absolutely. So you mentioned normally this would be in person and going room to room and being very intimate. Now with technology and obviously because of the pandemic, you're doing things a little different. So talk about the way you're doing it now, which is really allowing you to reach even more people and make an even greater impact. Yeah, that's totally right. You know, in March, when, when all this really started to come down hard, uh, we had to shut down all of our in-person programs in hospitals, which was basically, you know, 99% of what we do. Now, the good news for us is that for years now, we've been also offering to hospitals and healthcare facilities virtual programs where we would connect live music to patients uh, throughout the country. And so what we had to do was really quickly pivot and start doing that with all of our energy. Because, you know, not only do we know that in-person wasn't going to happen, but we also knew that it's going to be a long time before they start letting, you know, people into hospitals without a COVID vaccine, for example. And so we really invested all of our time and energy in the virtual programs. And like you said, we've been actually playing for more people every month after the pandemic started than we were before. Um, we're playing for over 10,000 people a month now. Um, and we're doing everything from playing, you know, one-on-one -on -one with musicians playing to patients on tablets, to, you know, playing, having performances that are beamed into each and every hospital room within the hospital, uh, to concerts where we're literally reaching thousands of people in multiple hospitals at the same time. So we've really kind of taken this, um, you know, throw the kitchen sink at it approach to figure out how we can reach people virtually. But I can tell you that it has been so impactful and really needed now more than ever, I think, with everything going on in the pandemic. Yeah, absolutely. I feel like we, we need music more than ever just to get us through. Share a little bit of behind the scenes, the logistics of pulling these pieces together, because there's a lot of moving parts in terms of getting the musician and, and syncing that, and then obviously the hospital or the individual patient. So there's a lot of playing Tetris, so to speak, with the logistics. Walk us through how that works. Yeah, you know, well, the good news for us is having having worked with hospitals around the country for 21 years, they, they know us and they trust us. And then also because we had a lot of this infrastructure already set up and we're working with hospitals that had that technology as well, um, there was a level of comfort. So when we had to transition, um, it really was a bit you know easier for us than if we were trying to start this fresh because of the, all that experience. Now, when we're doing this, we're very mindful. Number one is that the caregivers are undergoing a lot of stress right now because they're not only doing their normal jobs, but now they're part of this COVID response. So they're really doing double duty on top of all these new restrictions with, with the PPE they have to wear and everything else. So we didn't want to do anything that was burdensome to hospitals. We wanted to make sure it was easy. So we worked with the hospitals that were able to work with us easily and had the technology to do so. Then we would reach out to, uh, you know, artist supporters who wanted to do virtual programs. And the good news for us is that it was actually a lot easier working with these artists because, you know, everyone was home. Everyone was in their living rooms and they didn't have to commit to a couple hours of driving to a hospital and going room to room in person, but we could do that all virtually from their homes. And then at that point, you know, our incredible team here at Musicians on Call would just set up these Zooms um, where depending upon what you know, we could do with that hospital or a number of hospitals we're working with would connect these artists to Zooms. And I can tell you that going into it, knowing how impactful our in-person programs were, I was a little nervous that, you know, maybe this virtual program wasn't going to be as impactful as the in-person. And while nothing can place, replace the in-person programs, the truth is these virtual programs have been unbelievable. Wrap us up with maybe one of your 
at least the top one that comes to mind in terms of stories of impact. So when you talk about the work you do and why it matters so much and, you know, whether it's a testimonial from a patient or someone that, you know, has reached out with a, a really kind note or email, just sharing their story, what's kind of the first one that pops into your head in terms of the impact that you're able to make? There was a, a patient out in LA who, um, due to an accident, was in a non-responsive situation uh, where this, this young woman just was non-responsive, almost coma-like situation. Um, and they tried everything and not a lot of things were working. And so finally a music therapist came in and said, have you ever thought about, um, thought about music therapy? And the parents were like, you know, gosh, nothing's really worked, so you might as well try. And so the caregiver said, well, you know, what is an artist that she likes? And so the parents said, well, uh, she was a big fan of Andrew McMahon and the Wilderness. And um, that was actually the first concert she went to was this, this artist, Andrew McMahon. And her favorite song was a song of his called Cecilia and the Satellites. And anyway, the, mu the music therapist said, all right, well, let's start playing some of his music and see what happens. And so they started playing his music. And next thing you know, a tear comes out of this young girl's eye. And you can see that for the first time since this accident, she was having a physical reaction and it was because of music. Now, fast forward to this summer, we were actually able to set up a Zoom where we had Andrew McMahon playing for this girl who literally his music helped wake her up out of this comatose state. And she has got a long road ahead of her, but she's responsive now. And just to see her and her mom on a Zoom with Andrew McMahon, as he sang that song to her, the one that you know helped wake her up out of this moment and all the tears that were coming out of, of happiness, really. Um, it just, you see moments like that and you say to yourself, we've got to make more of these things happen. And, and that's the magic that Musicians on Call helps facilitate between musicians and patients and hospitals. And, and that's why we, are, we have such this urgency to continue to do more of it. So I think, there's a lot of uh, sadness and stress that this pandemic has caused, but there's also a lot of beauty and hope and inspiration. And I think for me, that was one of them. You mentioned the website and where we go to get involved. Yeah, head to www.musiciansoncall.org. We could certainly use your help and, and just know that uh, we're going to continue to use music as a tool to help people through this pandemic and beyond. And we appreciate all of your support. And, uh, and honestly, Jeremy, we appreciate you as well for all you do to help shine a light on the good work we're doing. Hey, we're honored to be a part of it. Well, Pete Griffin, President and CEO, Musicians on Call, thank you for all you and your team do. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you for being a part of the show. Thanks so much for having me. We're honored to be with our good friend, our next guest, Richard Casper. He is a co-founder and executive director with Creative Vets, doing amazing things using the arts to help our veterans. So, Richard, how are you doing, buddy? I'm doing great. How are you doing? Doing well. So you've got a lot of news. You've got a new location. You've got new songs coming out. So we have a lot to talk about. But uh, for starters, let's back up. For those who are just now hearing this for the first time about Creative Vets, let's give them some context. You, uh, you know, served in the military, unfortunately witnessed the, the PTSD and and uh, unfortunately, the, the sad circumstances around that, but you know firsthand about just trauma and using art to be healed. So share a little bit of your personal story that leads to establishing Creative Vets. Yeah, thanks for that. I, I joined in 2003 into the Marine Corps and I uh, ended up going to Iraq in 2006 to 2007. And while I was there, yeah, my Humvee was blown up four separate times, which left me with a left traumatic brain injury. And my buddy was shot and killed beside me, which is what left me with the PTS. And so I struggled really bad when I transitioned out of the Marine Corps and art and music had never been an option to me before. I'm from a super small town. So I didn't know that it was used for anything other than just doing art. And so I randomly discovered art at a community college in Illinois that got my my brain think in a different way. So what I call it is transition. I transitioned my warrior brain to my artist brain. And I started thinking about my life and new experiences using symbols and colors to kind of show life and death. And it was a way for me to talk about my wounds of war without actually talking about it. I could put it in a piece of art, put it up on the wall and people could see it and talk to it or talk to me about it. And it was a lot easier for me to, you know, say, yeah, this painting or this art piece rather than, yeah, me, this happened to me, 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 because that's the hard portion. Um, and so from there, I started doing creative writing and songwriting because with the death of my gunner, 
I was still afraid to cry around people. And I wanted people to know that Luke lived. So I said, what if I had a song that I could just give to people? So when people come and ask me about his life, I could actually fulfill that and give it to them and walk away and they, they have the song. And so that led me on this journey of just discovery through art and music. I ended up at the best art school in the country, the School of the Arts of Chicago, studying conceptual art up there. I ended up writing with number one songwriters here in Nashville to tell my story. And it ultimately just completely changed my life uh, and re really remapped the trajectory of my life too. Because from that moment on, I knew other veterans might not take the road I did through the arts. And so I wanted to establish programming that was going to be good enough and exciting enough to pull veterans out of their comfort zone and into arts and music. So walk about or walk, walk us through how this works, because you have the songwriting, the music paired up with professional songwriters and award winning songwriters and musicians. You have the creative arts. You, there's a lot to this and you're finding them and they're finding you and you're going to them and you're bringing them to you. And so walk us through the programmatic piece of this. Yeah, so we have, it's kind of a, um, uh, a three different parts, how we look at it. Like internally, it's we have some low contact, uh, we have some medium contact and some high contact. And what I mean by that is for the low contact is those veterans who were just trying to get their foot in the door and it's, you know, come to our facility here in Nashville and learn to play the guitar or it's go to Vanderbilt and learn songwriting over at Vanderbilt. And we cover everything. We make sure that everything's provided the, the flights the food the housing if it's an external program coming to us it's internal we just pay for the the tuition the food the the travel anything that they need to do to get in the door and so these low contact things are huge groups where we're just saying hey learn guitar hey learn collage hey learn painting not not going in fully into the warrior brain to artist brain transition we just want to make sure that they're putting their toes in the water and, and testing it out then there's the next phase up and now they're like, okay, this is, this is actually kind of cool. I see other veterans like me doing this. So there's nothing wrong with this. I'm going to go to the next level, which is more of those, the medium contact, which is where we have our partnership with the country music hall of fame. We have partnerships with uh, a bunch of other organizations, the Dallas museum of art. Um, we do this art box program, but it's more of a small group meeting setting kind of thing. So where a group will learn songwriting and they'll be able to collectively write a song with each other and then we'll be able to talk about that transition and what they're doing and really promote them to connect and write a song. Same thing with art where we'll send out art boxes and we'll do small uh, Zoom meetings as of right now uh, to teach them how to use what they found in that art. But we do it again in a very small group setting and that used to be in person uh, and hopefully it will be again. And then we have more of these high contact programs which is really what built us. And it's what we only, for the first four years, it's all we had, but I knew I wanted to set the bar really high and work from the top bottom rather than the bottom top. And so we have two main programs. Uh, we, we either fly veterans to the best art schools in the country. And we've done this program at the School of the Arts of Chicago, Virginia Commonwealth University, and the University of Southern California. And we pay for the veterans flights, tuition, housing, uh, food for all three weeks. It's fully accredited. So they go to school like normal students do. It's just that they're in a class with other combat veterans and they're learning how to tell their individual story. And at the end of the three weeks, we have a gallery showing. We show their artwork to the community. They have conversations. It's an emotional experience. And then from there, we try to travel their art around the country as much as possible to have other veterans see it and then want to, so that whole cycle. So another veteran sees it, says, I want to create something like this and goes back into art. And then for songwriting, same kind of setup where we'll fly them from anywhere in the country. Because again, suicide doesn't have a geolocation feature. You don't know where it's going to be at. So we want to help everyone from everywhere. We'll fly them into Nashville. Uh, they get paired up with a mentor like me or another veteran who's been through the program. Uh, they'll begin to start telling their story. And then we'll write their song, the story that they told us into a song with them backstage at the Grand Ole Opry with number one or pro songwriters to finally kind of transition that, that, that story from being such a negative burden to a positive. We've had veterans who said, I can't tell my wife this, but I had to do blank in Iraq. And we get that out of them. And then they turn it into a song and they're so pumped up about it. They send their wife the song. They're like, hey, babe, listen to the song I just wrote. And it's, it's crazy the way that their mind has remapped and thought about that as a different situation. It creates conversation. It helps kind of bridge the military civilian divide. It's just, it's been doing wonders on relationships. And so they're here for four days. They get their song. They're able to tell that. Um, and again, veterans hear their songs and then they apply to our programs because of those songs they heard, right? I want a song like that. So it's this whole idea of getting veterans, uh, especially 
the ones not seeking help in the door to let them know art and music's an option. Speaking of mainstreaming this and both sharing the story, but inviting others and, and getting more to participate and, you know, to your point, just getting the public involved. Now you can basically say, Alexa, play music by veterans and poof, you've yeah. got music by veterans playing. And so talk about how these songs now are, are, are really through obviously a valuable partnership on your end now mainstreaming and you're, you're putting out the music for the public and to get more veterans involved too. Yeah, part of my big vision from get-go was that I wanted, there's a few few different plays on this. If on the business side, it was how do I get a self-sustaining program that could bring in revenue that can that could help fulfill our admin fundraising marketing needs. So any donor doesn't have to, they could just straight donate to program program development. And then the second thing was in the main one was how do I get in the homes of these veterans who don't want to leave their homes? So that opportunity came to us at, earlier this year with a partnership with Big Machine Records. So for those that don't know Big Machine, they have, they, they're the ones that found and launched Taylor Swift. They have a uh, Floor Georgia Line, Rascal Flats, Tim McGraw, Lady A, Brantley Gilbert, Justin Moore. You could just, just keep on people. rattling them off. There's a ton of them. And so now we signed an administration deal with them, but they're also bumping us up and helping us do some of the, the marketing like they would for an artist. So it's almost like a record deal. And with their partnership, we're able to release our music nationwide on all streaming platforms. And then from there, that wasn't enough for me because I was, I was like, awesome. Now we have distribution. We could put our music out there for veterans to hear this. But how do we get in the homes? And so when I reached out to Amazon, I said, you have an Alexa device. A lot of veterans have these devices in their homes. What if we can have a calling out? So if veterans struggling and they just want to feel connected to another veteran, they can say, Alexa, play me music by veterans, and it'll play our album, Veteran Songs. It'll say, here's an album by Creative Vets, Veteran Songs, and it'll play. And now you hear veteran creative music by veterans for veterans that are ultimately going to pull those veterans out of the house and then to our programming. Um, so it's a huge partnership. It was one of those, those monumental goals that we set, you know, seven years ago that we want to get to this point, and it's finally coming. Like, we obviously can't uh, afford to take over all those uh all the other things I talked about, like the, the marketing and all that stuff yet, but we know that with this partnership sealed now that over the years, we'll get to that point to be self-sustainable through that. Yeah. And so now you've got an opportunity to release music on a regular basis. And these are well-written songs. And when you talk about what the songs, I mean, I've listened to the album and they're well-written, they're amazing songs, extremely well-performing. They, these are world-class songs and they tell a story and some are inspiring, some are heartbreaking. They run the gamut. I know that you personally, you know, did that on purpose in terms of the songs that were selected to kind of share the different sides of this, but talk about that vantage point of just the production value of these songs. Yeah. We wanted to make sure that for one, other veterans can connect with these songs. Uh, we wanted to make sure that we, had, when we released the album, we wanted a strong balance because we have a lot of straight up veteran war story songs, some with no hope in them at all. And we didn't want to just release a whole album like that. But it is important to note that you need to release songs like that because you can't have conversations with veterans unless you know how they truly feel. I have a lot of times where we're writing a song where uh, the writer may say just like, hey, maybe we should put something uplifting in the bridge. And I say, honestly, if he doesn't feel that way now, we shouldn't put it in here because that's going to avoid the conversation in the future. Usually it's the people who feel like that you think have it put together that usually commit suicides because you're saying, oh, they're positive. They have this going on. I was like, I want to know in detail what's happening to you now so that you can send this to your family, friends and battle buddies and they can help you get help. And so just know when we start releasing the, the songs once a month, you may get one really hard impact song that you're like, what? What is this? But it's a veteran song and story that just absolutely needs to be told. Um, so yeah, did I answer that question? I kind of forgot. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's, that's the, <laughs> is the production value and the stories and, and you know, the selection process. So um, absolutely. T talk about, I mean, these are pro professionally produced songs. So talk a little bit about that. Yeah, so the production one, that that's what I was hanging up on. Uh, we made sure, when we very first started this, obviously we didn't have a lot of money to get these songs recorded, but I wanted to give veterans something. So we did these really small price demos, sent them out to the veterans. With this relationship with Big Machine, and because they're going to radio or to streaming platforms, we know we have to have top-notch recording. So we do sessions while the veterans are still here, right after they write their song. The next day, they get to go to the Ruckus Room, and they get to hear their song come to life with the best musicians in Nashville. I mean, they hear the song once on like a work tape, and they just put it down full band, 
and we fully record these things to push them out. And so from here on out, we're able to do that so that you, the listener, have the best sounding uh, song by the best, for one, the best writers in the world and the best musicians in the world. Mention again, website, social media, where to go. So just make sure that we all know exactly where to go to stay in touch and be in the loop. You can find us on all the social medias on LinkedIn, on Facebook, on Instagram, and on Twitter. All those handles, if you type in Creative Ets, you'll see us. I think Twitter's like Creative Ets 1. Someone beat us to it. Um, so just look up Creative Ets. You'll see our logo with a, a guitar pick and, and two uh, Marines in the middle of those two guitar picks walking. So just look us up on any of those social platforms. If you go to our website, we also have a live section so you can see when we're streaming because we also offer free classes. And this is open to the public. We're, we're mainly gearing it towards veterans who may feel be isolated, but it's on an open platform on our Facebook, on our Twitch, and on our YouTube. We'll teach songwriting with the number one songwriter, and we'll also teach uh, some of the arts. So you can look for us there too. Yeah, and obviously, nonprofit uh, focus on your end, financial contributions to underwrite your efforts is extremely important. So for everyone listening and watching this on the screen, financial contributions to underwrite your efforts uh, are really important to be able to do the work that you do. So Richard Casper, thank you for all you and your team do. Thank you for serving our country, for serving our veterans. Greatly appreciate it. Thank you for coming on the show. Thank you so much for having me and sharing the word. Thank you for watching the City Current Show, which is produced by City Current with funding provided by Lipscomb and Pitts Insurance, a Higginbotham company. To learn more about each of the guests, to share your stories of others, leading by example, or to watch past episodes and more media focused on good news, visit our website at citycurrent.com or follow along on social media using the handle or hashtag citycurrent. We look forward to seeing you again soon and thank you for all you do to power the good.